Hi, my name is Julie. I'm an engineer at Microsoft, and today I'm going to talk to you about getting started with best practices in Azure DevOps. So Azure DevOps is our you know, CI CD tool. It has repositories and pipelines. Um, and in my job, I help customers you know, debug issues, but also just give them pro tips to get started on the right foot. And so I'm going to share these with you today. Um, there's about five. And um, I have this demo. Um, I call it the governance uh, demo because once you get beyond sort of hello world, right, and you grow as a team or organization, um, you have many developers working together. And one of the trickiest things about cloud in general is sort of how do I give them the flexibility to iterate very fast and deploy very fast, but apply some sort of like security boundaries um, to meet compliance, regulations are also just to have that sort of um, check in place so that you can sleep soundly knowing one team is, team is not going to blow up the other team. So um, I don't like Foo and Bar or App 1 and App 2. And the example that I use um, with Azure customers is uh, fruits and vegetables in the supermarket. So as you can probably tell from the name, right? So fruits is sort of default isolation for just the fruits. Um, and veggies, the same default isolation just for veggies. And the idea is that you give them sort of control over their own little project, which has repos and pipelines, and they can do whatever they want, right? There's that sort of flexibility. But obviously you do lose um, some collaboration. They by default cannot talk to each other. So one of the biggest requests is just sort of, okay, how do we collaborate with a shared backlog and build features together, right? So if you were to keep that sort of isolated model, for um, code and deploying, you keep that. I have projects, fruits and projects, vegetables. And you'll see here, I have a um, separate project that only has Azure boards and it's called shared collaboration. Um, you could do it that way and save yourself the security overhead of managing permissions when it comes to code and pipelines. Um, the caveat here is that you can't link uh, code commits to work items in a different project, right? So that's the trade-off that you have to live with. Um, what many organizations then try to do is a supermarket model. Uh, when you have the supermarket model by default collaboration, um, that means that you have to apply permissions to lock everything down for those individual teams. Um, that is a bit more tricky because the decisions that you make up front, um, some of them are harder to sort of reverse um, than others. So very brief sort of intro to my governance demo. Let's get started uh, with tip number one. So tip number one is that when you have an organization, uh, don't add users here under this tab. As you can see, I should be the only user. There are many people working with this. And the way you do that is you integrate Azure Active Directory. So identities, right? So both for authentication, who are you, as well as authorization, they all map back to Azure Active Directory groups. Um, the biggest advantage to this is that, let's come to a project, let's just pick fruits because it's the first one, is that um, these teams here, right, you can see that they come from Team Foundation, which is Azure Active Directory. If I come up to permissions, I should see more. Let's pick administrators members. Um, and you can see here that the fruits admins group, right? I'm giving them admin permissions because I'm putting them in the project administrators role in Azure DevOps. It comes from Azure Active Directory. And that means that let's say somebody leaves a particular role or they leave a particular company. Um, you only have to update in one place what their role is or what group memberships do they have. And that's an Azure Active Directory. So you do it once and then both on the ARM side, as well as the Azure DevOps side, that person no longer has administrator rights or that person no longer has contributor rights. Similarly, let's say you have um, an expert, right? And that person uh, can help other teams going into production and you have to throw them into a, um, another team's projects. How can you do that quickly? So one way is to add them to the Azure Active Directory group, but another way that's pretty cool if you come up here is, uh, let's see. All right, so when I recorded the last video, I was looking for something and I couldn't find it. So now I know where it is. And um, I wanted to show a trick if you want to temporarily add a person or 
a AAD group to a project. Um, and there's an easy way to do that. In the previous video, I was in the project page. What I needed to do was come up to the organization level. I'm in governance demo. So if I click on organization settings um, over here to users and then group rules, and there is an interesting overview here. Um, what's important to understand is that these are rules and I kind of added them from this level, which if I decide to use the uh, default roles here, it's pretty handy. So an example where, uh, let's say the veggies uh, team or the product, they're building something that's going to production next week. They're really nervous. I can just sort of click here and give this DevOps subject matter expert V team access to that project, to the veggies project. Um, and then as well with an easy sort of click, I can just remove them. So it's kind of helpful for this type of use case where you have a team of experts that sort of sprinkled into different uh, projects. Um, they move around a little bit. It's not a proper sort of like a V team. It's a horizontally, you know, just a bunch of experts.